Hey guys, here is a quick guide to fixing and driving the new vehicles in Rust. I have split the video into different parts and have left timestamps in the description. Enjoy! Ok, so the first step to getting the car running is finding all of the vehicle parts, which are the valves, spark plugs, crankshaft, carburetor and pistons. These can all be found in big crates toolbox crates or military crates. If you want higher quality parts, you can buy them at the bandit camp or the outpost as shown. This will increase the speed and fuel efficiency, however they are expensive. Car parts can also be found at Oxum's gas station in the toolboxes. There are two engine sizes in the game. The smaller engine requires just one of each part in order to get it running, whereas the bigger engine requires an extra valve, spark plug and piston. You will also need low grade fuel which is stored in the back. I also recommend researching all of the low quality parts first as they are cheap to make. Before you are ready, you should have all of the parts fuel, a hammer, wood, metal fragments, high quality metal to get the car running. Next, you will need to look for a car, which there are plenty of around the map, as they spawn near the roads. One thing to note, I have read that the vehicles have replaced all helicopter spawns, meaning you will not find them on the road anymore. Also, look for cars that already have armor plating, as there are two different armor tiers. You can tell them apart by looking at the max health value as shown. If all parts of the car have zero health, this means it is destroyed. You can harvest materials from it using a jackhammer. You should look for a car with short length and a bigger engine to start with, as they have the highest speed and acceleration. Once you have found a suitable car, place all of the parts inside by right clicking and don't forget to place the fuel in the back. After you get in the driver's seat, the controls are W to start the engine and go forward, S to reverse and AD to turn. If you want to switch seat, press X, and if you want to turn on the headlights, press F. For armored vehicles, you can open and close the windows on the side if you choose to shoot out from them. Only the passengers can shoot out of the vehicle. I also did some testing for the top speed of the small vehicle, first with low quality parts, and was able to reach 40 km an hour, but it can reach 60 km an hour going downhill. At this speed, the car was easy to handle and the speed was reasonable when going downhill. The top speed I got for medium quality parts on level ground was 60 km an hour and 80 km an hour going downhill. At this speed, the car had normal handling which made it the fastest yet controllable method of travel. The top speed I got for high quality parts on level ground was 80 km an hour and 100 km an hour going downhill. At this speed it was much harder to handle, therefore I do not recommend using the high quality parts as they are expensive and cannot be researched. I want to also mention that there are trucks in the game, with two large engines at the center. Naturally, I had to test the top speed with the high quality parts. As you can see, I was able to easily achieve 100 km an hour when driving on the roads. The truck does function with just one engine, but it is slower. Finally. I did some testing to see how much damage the armoured vehicle can take at a close distance. 
the pistol rounds did 4 damage per bullet, and the regular 556 rounds also did 4 damage per bullet, as shown. However, what surprised me the most was how effective the shotgun was at damaging the armor, making it the most effective weapon for taking vehicles down at a close distance. I also noticed during testing that it doesn't matter if you shoot at the front of the vehicle, as the damage is shared across all of the parts. Once the vehicle is destroyed, White satchels drop containing all the engine parts and inventory that were stored. I will show you how to modify the vehicles in another tutorial. Otherwise, that's it. Thanks for watching and leave a like for more Rust tutorials.